know the sound of the label that you are submitting to. So this can be five things you tell your younger self. It could be five things you might tell your group of girls. It might be your five things you just big tips in life. Could be DJ tips, could be production tips. Could be, you can go hardcore on production if you want to go hardcore because a few people have done hardcore and they those ones flew. So you knock, it's your five. Okay, all right. Number one Maybe then. Also... Okay, number one. Know the sound of the label that you are submitting to. It is so important to research the label. Um, I cannot stress that enough. I have been really, really in, like emphasizing this when we are running each contest to the point where I now have it in every single landing page because we, we swap out the landing page for each remix contest for for our campaign and every time there's a new contest there's a line at the bottom that says please research tool room releases house and tech house please research their last six months of releases and when you submit your remix make sure it is the sound of the label do your research i think it's really important to note this stuff because if you are um uh, sending tracks that don't have anything to do with the sound of the label. Number one, they're not going to be interested. But number two, they'll also kind of like get to know you as somebody who's not really doing your research of them. And so they might not pay attention to what you send them back if they don't like it. Right. So they want to know that you're paying attention to what they're doing. So that would be my first piece of advice for sure. I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love that, that you've said, said that. <laughs> I literally so... the biggest smile came across my face when you said that because I've now got that's amazing. I say yeah. it so much myself. Yeah. Um, okay. That I love like is... the emails, where, uh, but on that point, I love the emails where I get where I get any I get a demo and it's like just in case you're feeling down tempo today, and I'm like, dude or do that. I'm never feeling down tempo. It's party. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly, pay attention to what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. So, you know what? Because our, our community, our, our producer community has people who make uh, experimental electronic music. And mm. um, I didn't want to wait waste the label's time by having people submit, like, random stuff. Uh, we're actually going to do something really interesting uh, with our group because of this. Because there are some people that make some like really off the wall stuff. Uh, we're gonna at some point during the campaign this year, we're gonna do a do whatever you want contest, and nice. it's actually not to get signed to a record label specifically. It'll just be to win Native Instruments gear, and you can nice. literally do whatever the fuck you want, and you just send it in, and we'll pick the top three winners. Um, so that's for the people who are making stuff that aren't really aligned. And like, for example, this is exactly why we're going to techno next from our tech house contest. Mm -hmm. We just did club sweat and pool room. Like we're going mm -hmm. to Soma next because I don't want to just like exhaust the poor tech house people. Like they need to take a little mm -hmm. break and then we need to focus on some new sounds and give the techno people a chance and the drum and bass people a chance. So, okay. You should, um, you should this... definitely speak to Ninja though, from a, from an experimental point of view, because they're pretty hot on female male balance and, Ninja Tune? Yeah, I'd love to. I don't have a contact for them, but I'd love to. They're huge. I can probably hook you up. Oh. I think I can. Yeah, I can. That would be great. I would love that. There's, we have a I'll bunch speak of you people after. Okay. Um, okay. So my second one would be always use... Um, huh? Number two. <laughs> number, Go on. number two would be I would I usually use a reference track when um, I'm making music um, not to copy it uh, obviously <laughs> but to have an idea of what the heck you're gonna do or let's say this kind of goes back to the sound of the record label say you want to submit something to need even sound so maybe take one of their most recent releases and put it in the track one of your project. And then you can mm -hmm. get an idea of what BPM they're releasing uh, or what idea and direction you want to go in. It's really good to do this. I Sometimes you can do two or three even reference tracks to 
get an idea of the sound you're going to try. Just you can always go back. Does it sound a little bit like this? Another thing I often do is I take some of my own tracks and I do that. Um, because like, for example, I'm making something for Rothantic again, and I just like it's been a minute since I've made anything for them. So I needed to be reminded. So I put like conspiracy in the top, uh, first channel. And then that's like my reference is my, my own song <laughs> to so just go back and listen to be like, okay, yeah, don't forget. They don't like melodies here. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I guess that would be a second piece of advice a lot of people do this already but if you didn't do that do it good idea number three i think it's a good idea sometimes when you're road testing music to take video of yourself road testing music and when you're shopping it send the video to the promoter don't send a video of like five people dancing in front of the song you know what i mean send a video of people actually getting into it and there's a good crowd but like, if you have like a solid video of people dancing, like at a festival, even if you play at a small stage or something like that, or at a club, then that will help sell the record for sure, a hundred percent. That's cool. Um, I guess I guess okay. if you're not playing gigs, then it'll be a would maybe get some a bigger artist to do play it for you. That's another thing yeah. to do. That's another thing to do for sure. Mm. Um, if you can, if you can get somebody to do that. For you um okay oh another production wise okay so four yeah i at the very top of ableton there's various um color-coded things where you can put your favorite sounds and stuff to be honest i was extremely lazy with this up until the past year and now that i'm doing it it's like oh why wasn't i freaking doing that before like oh my god if you want to so much easier for yourself pick your favorite kicks pick your favorite risers pick your favorite like sometimes like just a simple riser that goes on for a really long time is hard to find or if you make a sound sometimes you can make your own rising sounds and stuff like that or white noise effects and then put them in your favorite this is a huge useful thing to make your tracks more automated and to finish music better you don't want to be searching for brand new sounds throughout making every single new track that you do. Otherwise you're going to be doubling your time. And I think automating things is really important in life in general. So yeah, I would highly recommend using the favorites tab on the left side of the able project. I have no idea if they do that in logic or other DAWs, but I'm an Ableton girl and it's a very useful thing to use. That's cool. Yeah. That's a good one. Number five. Where's my five? Take an active part in promoting your music. I mean, I know that's a really simple, lame thing to do, but I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> oh no, that's a, that's a big one for me. Uh, like I have been the one to like, for example, like the Desert Heart CP. Like I arranged both the premieres myself for the EP because I got bored of waiting for whoever the heck they were using for their promotional thing. Like, I don't even know like what the promotional team did for this I, other than sending out an in flight. But like, I was like waiting and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to reach out to Graham and see if he wants to premiere, you know, Slumber with a key. And then like I, music is for lovers is doing the other track on Friday. And like nice. also in, in just, just in general, like, you know, I invest in lots of um, Facebook marketing and for my own music. And I do whatever I can to think of a different piece of content for lead every day leading up the week leading up to the release and every day after the release comes out for at least a week. Just having a different piece of content to talk about the record. It's so important because our music is already so recyclable to begin with electronic music mm. it's just you know it gets forgotten so easily and if you don't constantly think of marketing ideas for your stuff then it'll just get forgotten about it you have to remind people so take videos of you playing these tracks um get videos of you playing of other people playing your tracks send your tracks if you your the label has an in flight cool but if you know 
DJs personally and the label, the sound of the tracks fit artists that you know, send them to them personally. I mean, one of the things that I'm going to do when we get off here today is send my EP to a whole bunch of people for the weekend. Because I think it's important that they receive it directly from me. It's a personal email. Um, it'll be a lot easier to get their attention with a personal email than an in-flight or some random, like, big, giant email send out. Um, and, yeah, I just think it's really important to take an active part in promoting your music as much as possible. Because if you don't, no one's, like, I mean, the label will only do so much. They have new release out every couple of weeks and they have probably already have their set in stone marketing plan but the question is how can you contribute to it how can you even make it better i love that one the most <laughs> I, oh, I love wow that that, that, that was, was my, the that's most. my fa- that literally my favorite i, I was, okay. i've been literally hammering that for a long time as well and so like i said hearing someone else say it is music to my ears I yeah you so much you know, a lot of big artists do this. Um, like Madonna does it every single time she there's an anniversary to one of her legendary albums or songs or whatever. She does this huge, or her team <laughs> does this huge post about it's the whatever 30th, 50th anniversary of True Blue or whatever. And then they'll do like some, maybe they'll do a remix. She's doing a remix album that's coming out. You know what I mean? Like lots of artists, they do year anniversaries. Well, it's the year anniversary to this. I've been doing that recently. The year anniversary mm-hmm. to my EP on Roger Sanchez's label. And then I'll just like post some videos of me playing it from last year. Because it's like, why, why, like I, when I had that grant for my album, we got a whole bunch of funding to do some really high end live streams. So I hired really solid video crew to come in to Coda nightclub in Toronto. We also did a couple other uh, different shooting locations and we shot high end video of me playing all my own music tracks from my album, plus other tracks that I released. So I have all this video content from last year. So like, why not take clips of that for the next three years? (laughs) You know what I mean? And use it to promote like tracks that already came out before to remind people of stuff I've released, you know, like, it's just important to constantly remind people of what you've done so they get to know you. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I completely agree with you. I actually saw a a while back, I saw an an established techno artist moaning that they hadn't, weren't getting gigs. And I literally went through like, literally went like I was first thing in the morning, I went through all their socials and was like, look, you've had this. And I posted this massive comment, like, You've you've done this, you've done this, you've done that. Well, why aren't you recycle? You aren't why aren't you taking that live stream that you obviously would done for Circle and chopping that up and putting it on your on, on your social media because you've got that massive piece of content. So why aren't you using it? And why aren't you yeah. reusing it and recycling <clears throat> it all the time? And and I never got a response. But yeah. if I did a live stream for Circle, believe it, I would be like using <laughs> clips from that thing. For- <laughs> Five years, every fucking two days. <laughs> I, I would be posting right. about that. <laughs> you would not be able to forget it. Like you would not forget it. I would be reminding you every every week about it. <laughs> yeah. So it's important. It's important. Okay. You got to think about content all the time, and <clears throat> you can either complain about it or you can just accept it and and have. You know, I, I meet on Mondays. We have a social media girl now for um, 23 by 23, and she's great. And mm. I meet her on Mondays, and we talk about everything we're going to post every day of the week. Because I don't have time to figure this out on a daily basis. And mm-hmm. like I said before, 23 by 23 is so much work already to begin with that I can't work on it every single day. I just need to automate it as best I can. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to have my meetings on Mondays, with my social media team. And I'm going to say, okay, this is what we're going to post all week. And then she has a calendar and she puts it in the calendar and then she posts it. And then, you know, I do whatever else I'm going to do for that day in regards to the campaign, because that's Monday is 23 by 23 day. But yeah, you have to sort of do that. You have to automate your life to make it a lot easier. And that's one coming up with content regularly. It's a lot of work. I know, but Watch this video next for more tips for DJs and producers and consider subscribing so you get these videos first. I have been Graham Farmer and thanks for tuning in this week. See you next week. Bye-bye.